The concept of the villain has been a pervasive and intriguing presence throughout history, weaving its way into literature, mythology, films, and even our real-world perceptions of good and evil. At its core, a villain represents opposition to the hero, embodying chaos, destruction, and the darker aspects of human nature. But the fascination with villains goes far deeper than their role as antagonists. It taps into the psychological and philosophical nuances of why we are drawn to them, why they often reflect parts of ourselves we are reluctant to acknowledge, and how they mirror societal struggles with power, identity, and morality. The archetype of the villain exists as a foil to the hero. In psychological terms, villains often embody the shadow self, a concept introduced by Carl Jung. According to Jung, the shadow represents the unconscious, repressed aspects of our personality, the darker impulses, fears, and desires that society deems unacceptable. When these aspects are left unacknowledged or unintegrated into the conscious self, they manifest as projections onto others, particularly those labeled as villainous. In essence, villains are the external manifestation of the chaos within us, representing the struggle between our moral aspirations and our more primal instincts. A powerful example of this dynamic is seen in contemporary culture, with figures like Heath Ledger's Joker in The Dark Knight. The Joker does not merely challenge Batman, but confronts society's hypocrisy, exposing the fragility of our moral systems. His chaotic actions reflect a philosophy of nihilism, where life lacks intrinsic meaning and all systems of order are illusions. Introduce a little anarchy, the Joker says. Upset the established order, and everything becomes chaos. This quote encapsulates the villain's role as a disruptor, a figure who rejects societal norms and forces others to confront uncomfortable truths about themselves and their world. The Joker, particularly as portrayed in The Dark Knight, is a character who transcends the typical villain archetype. He is not driven by a simple thirst for power, wealth, or personal gain, but by a deeper, more chaotic philosophy that rejects societal norms and challenges the very foundations of order. The Joker's character is a profound study in anarchism, nihilism, and moral relativism, presenting a villain who is not simply opposed to the hero, but embodies a complete rejection of the structures that define heroism and morality. At the heart of the Joker's philosophy is the belief that chaos is the fundamental truth of the world. In a society built on laws, rules, and structures designed to create order, the Joker sees these systems as fragile illusions. To him, human nature is inherently chaotic and selfish, and the moral codes that govern society are merely facades, easily shattered in the face of fear or desperation. As he famously says in the film, introduce a little anarchy, upset the established order, and everything becomes chaos. This quote reflects his core belief that all systems of order governments, laws, morality are artificial constructs that can be undone with the right push. The Joker's villainy, then, is not just about committing crimes or inflicting harm on others. It is about exposing the hypocrisy and fragility of society. His actions in The Dark Knight are designed not just to defeat Batman, but to force the citizens of Gotham to confront the inherent chaos in their lives. One of the most striking examples of this is the ferry experiment, where two groups of people prisoners on one ferry and civilians on the other are each given the opportunity to blow up the other ferry to save themselves. The Joker's intent is to prove that, when pushed to the brink, even the most seemingly moral individuals will resort to selfishness and violence. The ferry scene is particularly significant because it taps into the psychological concept of the social contract a philosophical idea most notably explored by thinkers like Thomas Hobbes and Jean-Jacques Rousseau. The social contract is the notion that individuals agree to abide by laws and norms for the greater good of society, sacrificing some personal freedoms for security and order. The Joker's challenge is a direct assault on this concept, suggesting that in extreme circumstances, the social contract will break down and people will revert to their baser instincts. The fact that neither fairy ultimately chooses to destroy the other can be seen as a victory for humanity, 
But the tension of the scene underscores how close society is to breaking down under the pressure of fear and survival. The Joker represents a figure of pure nihilism. He does not believe in any intrinsic meaning or value in life. As he tells Harvey Dent, I'm an agent of chaos, and you know the thing about chaos, it's fair. To the Joker, fairness and justice are illusions because the world is governed not by order, but by randomness and unpredictability. In this sense, the Joker embodies a form of moral nihilism, which holds that traditional values, ethics, and social norms are baseless, and that life itself is without inherent meaning. His relationship with Batman further illustrates this point. Batman represents the embodiment of order, justice, and the belief in the capacity of individuals to uphold a moral code, even in the face of darkness. The Joker, on the other hand, seeks to destroy these ideals, not simply by defeating Batman, but by corrupting him. The Joker's goal is to prove that even someone as steadfast as Batman can be broken, and that the line between hero and villain is far thinner than society is willing to admit. One of the most telling moments in the film is when the Joker taunts Batman by suggesting that they are two sides of the same coin. You complete me, he says, indicating that they are not opposites, but rather two parts of a whole. This line taps into a deeper psychological exploration of duality, the idea that good and evil are not separate forces, but are interconnected, and that the hero's struggle with the villain is, in a sense, a struggle with their own darker impulses. The Joker serves as a mirror for Batman, reflecting the potential for chaos and destruction that lies within even the most virtuous individuals. This dynamic between Batman and the Joker can be further understood through Carl Jung's concept of the shadow. According to Jung, the shadow is the unconscious part of the psyche that contains repressed weaknesses, desires, and instincts. For Batman, the Joker represents his shadow the chaotic, violent aspects of his own personality that he suppresses in his quest for justice. The Joker, in this sense, is not just Batman's enemy, but the embodiment of the darkness that Batman fears within himself. By refusing to kill the Joker, Batman is constantly resisting the temptation to give in to his own darker impulses. From a broader philosophical perspective, the Joker's worldview aligns with existentialist thought, particularly the ideas of Friedrich Nietzsche. Nietzsche famously wrote about the concept of the Übermensch, a figure who transcends conventional morality and creates their own values. While the Joker does not fit the traditional mold of the Übermensche, his rejection of societal norms and his creation of his own anarchic code can be seen as a distorted version of Nietzschean philosophy. The Joker rejects not only the values of society, but the very concept of value itself, creating a world where the only constant is chaos. However, unlike Nietzsche's Übermensch, who creates new meaning and values in a world devoid of inherent purpose, the Joker seeks only to destroy meaning. His actions are not about building something new, but about tearing down the structures that others rely on for stability and identity. In this way, the Joker represents a form of active nihilism, where destruction and chaos are embraced as ends in themselves. The Joker's philosophy is deeply unsettling because it challenges the very foundations of how we understand morality, order, and the self. He forces us to confront the possibility that the structures we depend on for meaning and security laws, ethics, social contracts are fragile and could be undone at any moment. This sense of existential dread is what makes the Joker such a compelling villain. He is not just a criminal or a madman. He is a symbol of the chaos that lies beneath the surface of society and the human psyche. In the real world, figures like the Joker can be seen in individuals who reject societal norms and embrace chaos for its own sake. While few people reach the extremes of the Joker, his philosophy resonates in movements and ideologies that seek to dismantle traditional structures of power and authority. In this sense, the Joker is not just a fictional villain, but a reflection of real-world anxieties about the fragility of order and the potential for chaos in human life. The allure of the Joker lies in his unpredictability, and the way he exposes the darker, more chaotic side of human nature. He is a villain who forces us to question not only the nature of evil, 
but also the nature of good, and whether the moral systems we depend on are as solid as we believe them to be. By embodying chaos and rejecting the very concept of morality, the Joker becomes more than just a villain, he becomes a philosophical challenge to the very fabric of human society. In the realm of real-life villains, the psychology of figures such as Adolf Hitler or Joseph Stalin offers a disturbing glimpse into how individuals can embody villainous traits on a grand scale. Both men were driven by ideologies that placed their own power and vision above the well-being of others, resulting in atrocities that reshaped the 20th century. From a psychological standpoint, figures like Hitler and Stalin reveal the dangers of unchecked narcissism and authoritarianism where a single individual's need for control and validation can spiral into violence on a massive scale. Their actions were not simply the result of inherent evil, but were shaped by historical, social, and psychological factors. Both men had an almost pathological need for power, reflected in their manipulation of public sentiment and the use of propaganda to consolidate control. This connects to philosopher Hannah Arendt's concept of the banality of evil, which suggests that evil deeds are often committed not by monsters, but by ordinary people who have become desensitized or disconnected from moral considerations through ideology or systemic forces. In this light, real-world villains like Hitler are not anomalies but products of environments that allow for the flourishing of destructive behavior. But the villain does not always operate out of purely malicious intent. Some villains are driven by a complex moral compass that challenges traditional notions of good and evil. Consider Eric Killmonger from Black Panther, a villain whose motivations stem from legitimate historical grievances and a desire for justice. His radical method, however, place him in opposition to the film's hero, T'Challa. The world took everything from me, Killmonger says, highlighting how personal trauma can fuel a villain's actions. Killmonger's villainy is not the result of inherent evil, but is a response to centuries of oppression, inequality, and marginalization. His philosophy reflects a form of moral realism, recognizing that violence and power are often the only means to enact change in a deeply unjust world. This complexity is echoed in philosophical discussions about the nature of evil. Is a villain inherently evil, or are they shaped by circumstances and choices? This question has haunted philosophers for centuries. Thinkers like Thomas Hobbes argued that humans are naturally selfish, and without societal structures, chaos and violence would reign. This view suggests that villainy is an inevitable consequence of human nature. Conversely, Jean-Jacques Rousseau believed that humans are inherently good, and that societal corruption creates villains. In this sense, villains are not born but made by the systems and circumstances around them. The duality of the villain is also evident in figures like Walter White from Breaking Bad. Starting as a high school chemistry teacher diagnosed with terminal cancer, Walter White transforms into the ruthless drug kingpin, Heisenberg. His journey into villainy is gradual and deeply psychological. At first, his criminal activities are justified by the desire to provide for his family. But as the series progresses, it becomes clear that Walter is driven by a need for power, control, and recognition. His descent into villainy is marked by his increasing willingness to sacrifice others for his own gain. Yet throughout, he maintains a veneer of moral justification. I did it for me, Walter eventually admits, revealing that his true motivation was not altruism, but the satisfaction of his ego. Walter White's transformation exemplifies a broader philosophical inquiry into the nature of the self. Is the villain an aberration of the self, or is it a natural expression of the ego's desires when unchecked by moral constraints? Philosophers like Friedrich Nietzsche would argue that the villain represents the ultimate expression of the will to power, a driving force within all individuals to assert their own reality and values over others. For Nietzsche, the villain is not necessarily evil, but embodies a kind of radical individualism, unafraid to challenge societal norms and impose their will. But not all villains are motivated by power or ideological fervor. Some, like Patrick Bateman from American Psycho, 
reflect a deeper psychological disturbance, a disconnection from empathy and morality altogether. Bateman's psychopathy is a chilling exploration of how a lack of emotional connection to others can manifest in violent, sociopathic behavior. His villainy is not driven by ideology or trauma, but by a profound detachment from human relationships. There is an idea of Patrick Bateman, he narrates, but I am simply not there. Batman's villainy challenges our understanding of what it means to be human, suggesting that the absence of empathy and morality creates a void where villainy thrives. This absence of empathy can also be found in real-world figures such as Ted Bundy, whose charming exterior masked his horrifying crimes. Bundy's ability to manipulate and deceive, combined with his complete lack of remorse, align with the traits of a clinical psychopath. His villainy is not just a matter of personal immorality, but reflects broader questions about human nature and the capacity for evil within ordinary individuals. Bundy, like Bateman, represents a form of villainy where the self is devoid of human connection, reducing others to mere objects of gratification or control. At the heart of the philosophy and psychology of villains lies a fundamental tension, the struggle between the self and society between individual desires and collective morality. Villains force us to confront the uncomfortable truth that the line between good and evil is not always clear. They compel us to question whether we are truly as moral as we believe ourselves to be, or if, under the right circumstances, any one of us could become a villain. As Fyodor Dostoevsky once wrote in The Brothers Karamazov, nothing is easier than to denounce the evildoer. Nothing is more difficult than to understand him. Villains challenge our understanding of justice, morality, and human nature. They expose the fragility of our ethical frameworks and the ease with which they can be manipulated or discarded. Whether motivated by trauma, ideology, power, or a complete lack of empathy, villains reflect the darker aspects of the human psyche. They embody the shadow within us, all the parts of ourselves we are often too afraid to confront, but cannot ignore. The philosophy and psychology of the villain are rooted in an exploration of human nature itself. Villains reveal the complexity of moral decision-making, the dangers of unchecked power, and the terrifying consequences of psychological detachment. Whether in fiction or reality, they serve as a mirror reflecting our deepest fears, desires, and the shadowy parts of the human experience. The villain's role, ultimately, is not just to oppose the hero, but to make us question the very nature of good and evil itself.